Hi there, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for another episode of 3D Printing Thursdays. Now, in the world of 3D printing, it's no secret that FTM-style machines, which are systems that build parts layer by layer using a strand of filament, cannot print steeply overhanging geometry without the use of supports to hold it up. In the case of MarkForged, supports come in the form of a thin, repeating pattern that holds up part features while they print and is easily removable after printing. Regardless of the support style, extruding material onto a 3D printed support structure is always going to result in a different surface finish in comparison to self-supporting geometry. This doesn't necessarily mean the surface finish is bad, but what do you do if this interferes with the function of your part either cosmetically or mechanically? Well, in today's episode, we'll take a quick look at a few different methods you can use to post-process the supported areas of your 3D printed parts if needed or desired. So, for today's video, we'll be using several different prints of this custom motor enclosure to demonstrate five different ways that you can potentially post-process the supported areas of your 3D prints. Functionally, there would likely not be a need to worry about the surface finish on the interior of these specific parts, but I think it does a good job of showing that without making design changes like part splitting, some parts are just simply going to require supports. Obviously, the first step for all of these parts will be to, well, remove the support material, which you can see an example of here. If you're curious, I will be saving these supports to play some polka music later. Now, I'm sure this will not be a surprise to many of you, but almost every method we're going to go over here today starts with sanding the supported areas of your part. This smoothens out the supported geometry and creates a surface that more readily accepts common post-processing methods like painting, for example. You will always want to start with a low grit sandpaper, and as an example here, we started with 240 grit. And while not shown on screen, you will always want to wet sand your parts and wear a mask and eye protection while doing so to protect against plastic particles. Placing your parts under a faucet makes wet sanding very easy, and if you have access to tools like a palm sander or even a lathe, then the sanding process could be sped up by quite a bit. Either way, we spent about five minutes sanding the underside of this particular part, which improves the smoothness of the surface by a small amount. So, for anyone who has ever sanded their 3D prints, you'll know that low grit sanding will almost always result in dulled colors for that particular area, as you can see in the example on screen, which is after the part has dried a bit. This is due to the fact that low grit sandpaper obviously changes the surface of your part, which causes it to reflect light differently. While we do have a smoother surface now, what if you want it to be even smoother? Or what if you do not want to paint it, but would like the original color back? Well, for this, one of the best options is to continue sanding the part with ever-increasing grits of sandpaper. For this example, we have several different grits that were used. After starting with our base 240 grit, we slowly progress the wet sanding by using 400 grit, then 600, followed by 800, up to 1000, and eventually ending on 2000 grit. After letting the part dry for a bit, we are left with a surface that is miles smoother than even the non-supported areas while almost fully reclaiming its original color. Unfortunately, until YouTube implements tactile feedback videos, you'll have to trust me on the smoothness, but you can definitely see the difference between our two sanded parts. In terms of time, we only spent a few minutes on each sanding step and if we wanted more smoothness or to get closer to the original color, we could have added a few more steps while walking up the grit or used something like 2500 or 3000 grit sandpaper as a finisher. Basically, the more time you spend here, the better results you could see. And that actually brings up a great point about this particular process. While it does yield some excellent results, it can be time consuming and maybe not even feasible across many dozens or hundreds of parts. So let's go back to the start with a part that we've only sanded with two different low grits and explore our next option, which is heat polishing. As the name implies, this one is a fairly self-explanatory walkthrough. As I mentioned, we've spent a few minutes sanding this enclosure and have decided that the smoothness is good as is. 
However, like our last option, we don't want to paint this, but would like some of the original color back. So using this heat gun, the goal is to very briefly bring the surface up to near its melting point, which will change the physical properties of our outer layers and bring back some of that nice base color. Now, I will admit that this one can be a little tricky and there are quite a few things to consider here. First, every material has its upper temperature limits, so I definitely could not use the same heat settings on Markforge PLA as I would with Onyx. This means that you would need to find a heat gun with lower limits that will fit your material properties. Next, it can be a bit easy to melt certain sections of your part if you concentrate the heat for too long, which is why the tool is being fanned around here a little bit. While filming this, I did not have access to a laser thermometer, which would have made this process far more accurate, but that means a second tool, which might not be reasonable. And lastly, for this specific material, our geometry is getting in between 150 and 200 Celsius, which means I probably should be using gloves just in case. But if you can get the hang of this, you can turn around a part in only a few minutes and get that dulled surface back to its original color. In terms of smoothness, you should get a surface finish that is no better or no worse than what you sanded it to. I only polished half of this part just for the sake of a visual comparison, but as you can see, it almost exactly matches a part that has not been touched in any way other than removing supports. All right, so heat polishing can be a good combo, as you saw, but like I mentioned, it can be a bit difficult as it requires extra hardware, and there is that possibility of deforming smaller features if you aren't careful. So we are down to our final two examples, and here's where things might start to get a little bit weird. So just like with our heat polishing, we have a part here that we've sanded with a few lower grits of sandpaper to smoothen it up a bit. To get some of that original color back, we're going to polish this part with some good old petroleum jelly. That's right, we're going to apply some Vaseline to this part. I think that this is by far the most simple explanation of all the examples we're going to include here today, as all we're going to do is take our sanded part and apply a coat of jelly to the area we want to restore color to. A few lesser known uses of petroleum jelly are polishing leather and protecting metal from rusting, but it actually does a great job of polishing certain plastics as well. Once we apply our coat, we simply let this part sit for an hour for this specific recording, and then after that time, all we opted to do was remove the excess with a dry rag. Once we're done, you can see there's still a little bit in the edges, but overall it's mostly removed and the color is almost identical to what we had originally with our part. We also had a part that we let sit with a coat for about 24 hours, and overall we didn't see much of a difference with that color, but something other than black might show results better the more time you leave this on. So I think the question then becomes, why would anyone ever opt to use this? Well, in comparison to heat polishing and sanding at ever-increasing grits, there's very little human involvement during the time spent getting to that final version. This does share one advantage with heat polishing in that the surface finish is not going to be any better or worse than what you sanded it to, so essentially this is just a very simple way to get uniform cosmetics on a part. And in theory, any other petroleum distillate like WD-40 or even other oil-based products could yield similar results. Okay, so we're down to our final processing example for the day. If you take a look at our other options leading up to now, you'll notice that regardless of the steps taken, each one required human involvement to get results. Even the bare minimum sanding example has us spending a few minutes on each part, which again, might not be feasible. So I wanted to feature a more broad category for this final option, which is to post-process your parts using dedicated equipment or processes. So in our case, we took one of our enclosure parts after printing it at its original size and removing supports, and processed the entire thing using an AMT PostPro SF100. This is a vapor smoothing solution for 3D printed parts that is extremely useful for taking the quality of parts up a notch. In the context of processing support areas, 
you can see that there's an obvious difference in not just the direct overhangs, but in the overall part itself. And just like with the sanded part, I unfortunately can't upload the feel of it, but the supported surfaces are much smoother than the original. Vapor smoothing comes in many different forms, and if you'd like to learn more about some of the dedicated options, you can feel free to click on the link in the description. If you're still with us, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this full video. We went over a few examples and options here today, and while the focus was purely on supported areas, you can definitely use any of these on an entire part as well. Each one of these has their own advantages and disadvantages when working with Mark Forged parts, and I personally think that a combination of sanding at finer grits and then either heat polishing or petroleum jelly polishing would be a great option. Let us know down in the comments which one you think looks the best or that you would prefer to utilize based on your available time. Feel free to share any other post-processing methods you prefer to use and to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with content like this. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next time.